patients um, that are uh, at uh, stages, uh, you know, requiring commercial or pre-commercial thinning um, <coughs> to reduce the threat of, uh, you know, loss through insect disease, and wildfire, uh, the thinning. Um, the purpose and need also outlines, uh, you know, wildlife <coughs> habitat benefits from the thinning, uh, as well as some, uh, you know, economic opportunity. Uh, so what we're going to look at today is uh, specifically one of the um, commercial thinning uh, contract or sales uh, within the within the project. We're going to look at two units, uh, one that has not been cut. It's going to illustrate the, the need for the work. And then we're going to look at uh, a unit or two uh, that, that have already been uh, been harvested. And I thought that was already on the books for three two chiefs. So this is not funded through two chiefs, correct? This is this is a timber sale, but other uh, other portions of, of the ground covered by the environmental uh, so the NEPA document are are being thinned, uh, you know, pre-commercial thin with with two chiefs money. So there's the west side plantation thin, and then there's the the non-commercial chiefs. Non Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. That's so, what we did with Beaverside and Kelsey too. There was no commercial aspect, but we were funding that and that little dope project. Some of the there fuels were no commercial. Aspect? Not in the two cheese part. Oh, we, two we had, there's plenty of commercial right. on it. Yeah. It's just that was all. We we just had the fuels portions. In so it. Tom, did you guys buy all of the Westside sale? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. All 5,500 acres. Uh, Commercial. Only the commercial part. Yeah. That all wasn't commercial. Okay. Yeah, not the the, the 5,500 acres is what percentage is commercial approximately? Um, well, I can, this is like 875 acres or something. I mean, total out of the 5,500, half? Or or so. Not so half, I don't know. Oh, just 800 of the 5,500 is commercial? I can look up the exact number for you in just the ballpark in the document. I think it's it <laughs> overall. I think it's close to half. This sale is is about eight hundred acres, right? and it sold for three million. Is that right? I believe so. I don't know the total amount. It's it's a, it's a delight. Well, I'm just asking because I understand a portion the of the money was supposed to come back to do some of the fuels work. I don't know if the yeah, it's a steward. Actually, this is not a timber sale. It's a stewardship project. Right, good. So yeah, the, uh, it, it is going to be generating, um, it's a, called an integrated resource uh, timber contract, IRTC. So any uh, any amount that was earned above the base rates, um, you know, in between the advertise rate and the, the bid rate, will go into stewardship receipts. Well, I thought it was all, all so. receipts. It's not all receipts. Anything above the base rate. Anything above the base rate. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we have to cover certain costs, and then above that, like the, the extra or whatever. So, do we have any kind of expectation what, we, what we'll get for fuels treatments after that? Um, or service work or whatever? Dollars? I can't speak to that right now. I mean, you know, we haven't, we're, we're not at that point yet, but. Um, right, well, I mean, when you were I mean, planning it, what was, did you have a ballpark? It, it all depends on how much it's sold for, so Tom, anything yeah. above... Tom Hall told us $600,000 okay, the then purchase that's, price. Then hopefully so I guess, the, you know, the collaborative wants to know what happens to that $600,000. Are you going to apply it? And is it under contract to do the non-commercial thinning? I it, can't, It's yeah. not under contract yet. Yeah, it's not under contract. We've, how come? You got the money. Well, we don't have the money yet. They're... The money it's gets every month coming more in. of that money comes into the pot because they have to log it in order to get the money. They don't so prepay. It, it, no. We don't get you don't get the money up front. It you know every truckload that goes into the mill and gets accounted for a portion of that money goes into the retained receipts. So now the, the good news is that the uh, volume that's coming off is probably going to overrun some. So there should be a little more money. Table lost again. <laughs> there should be a little more money than if if it were just what the original advertised volume was. So there's an additional volume that's going to come off. Yeah. So I think it's fair enough from the questions I'm hearing that we come back to the collaborative in a in one of your regular meetings with a, a rundown of of the numbers. And that'd be easy to do. So once, especially once they come in a little bit more, so we have have that. 
Well, I think we're really anxious to see the non-commercial units get thin because, you know, the administration may pull that stewardship money. If they can pull two chiefs' money out, they can pull that out. You know, we don't want to see that money lost. We want to see it applied on the ground, and there's more acres of non-commercial than there is commercial to thin. So. Well, you bet. We have that concern across the whole forest. Because we have retained receipts on the other side, million dollars, you know, that um, it's like it can go. It can be grabbed. Yeah. It can be, you know, there's a lot of flexibility in use of those funds. So let's get a report back on that. And, um, it seems like that's all the more reason to be planning that service work now so we can implement it before the money gets grabbed. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the bulk of the two chiefs' money uh, for FY17 went to. Uh, Plantation thinning and uh, you know, reforestation site prep uh, post 2015 fires. The plantations that burned 15 fires. Uh, site prep for reforestation there, which does have a fuels component of, of uh, you know, piling that the, the dead material. So, are we going to see any roadside two chiefs that's not linked to plantations, just roadside? Uh, we are uh, we are planning to put FY18 money toward implementation of the. Oh, so uh, we're not going to see that the, today. No, we will on our side. That's all. Okay. We've, that's all we've got ours. That's what I'm anxious to see what that looks like. Okay, okay well, let's yeah. go and see let's something. Get to, yeah. Who's yep. leading? <laughs> okay, the skinny guys. Either that or. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go first. We're gonna go see Unit One that uh, has not been has not been cut yet. We're about. Uh, Stop my driveway. Yep. Okay. It's about a mile down the road. Lead, lead, lead on. Four and right. twelve. Right on. You want to meet us out next? Yeah. Considering we started in mid-July, we've we've gotten quite a bit of this project done. Mm -hmm. So by the time we hit uh, next year and we finish it, um, it'll be quite a quite an accomplishment for this unit. So, so did SPI buy both unit one and unit two there? Yeah, they're the purchaser of the whole contract. The whole 5,500 acres of whatever's... No, right. just the, the just this right. uh, yeah, west side plantation stewardship project. The 800 so. under the west side sale. Not the 2,200. There is no second sale for the other 1,400 acres yet. Yes. Oh, there's going to be. So... Um, so I, this is the uh, Klondike Mine Road stuff down here, and that's going to be next year, probably. Probably, yeah. That, they might get to this unit 12. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're they're going to move into unit two. Like I said, we couldn't get to unit this unit yet because we have where we're going to be hauling out of. We have to put rock on the road, and he, we didn't want to do any heavy road work. So. And Thomas both um, saw timber and pole. Is the big unit one up top, or is that, is there any uh, non-commercial in there, or is it, was it all commercial? Um, well, these contract. stands have all, but they're all commercial stands, but we're okay. actually, some of the stewardship work is um, taking the tops, you know, when we when we cut for saw timber, we cut down to a six inch top, mm -hmm. and then that top is usually waste wood. If we were on another part of the forest, we'd chip it. But in this case, um, they're taking those tops and they're stroking them down to about three inches, and they're sending these very small logs to um, Alta California Roundwood, which is in Anderson, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so that's sort of an extra facility that Great. we're sending that that material too they've been really anxious to, to try to get more involved it's on the short log um, it's yeah i mean everything that's come off here to my knowledge has mostly been dug for that's not so used to be over blue lake correct yeah blue lake ground so that, that's a blue lake ground stock okay. yeah and they changed their name to Alta. Alta california roundwood we saw one of the so. trucks going down the road on Wednesday when we were over in Hay Fork. So it's uh, it looks like a sort of, sort of like an East Coast logging operation because of the yeah. <laughs> because of the diameter yeah. of the log, but it looked really nice. This so. this unit one is atypical for the rest of these <laughs> units because yeah. this one they could never get it to the planting to take, and so you see a bunch of pine because they got desperate when they couldn't get the dug fir to grow and so they planted pine. Then there was shade and then the dug fir took off. So that's why it's an odd mix compared to all the other units. And the fir's over top of the pine at this point. Starting to, yeah. And so what's the age pretty much of the plantation? Uh, they were planted I think in 1974. Okay. 
At least that's some of the tags, the old tags I've seen. That's right. Mm -hmm. so. Which planet tree yeah, is most yeah. prevalent? Yeah. Eight times. Oh, eight, well, eight just times. to be, let's be clear. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, they, the the trees kept failing. They kept coming back every year, planting fir trees again, and that's why they finally planted pine. And the pine lived. Well, in this unit, but yeah, no, and it, yeah. I said this is atypical. Yeah. All the other units are pretty much dug fir. Yeah, and uh, at least the tags, the plantation tags say 1974. Okay, but I think this unit, you know, illustrates the need, you know, for the project. Oh, yeah. um, you know, specifically, you know, I, I look at it from a fuel standpoint. You've got, you know, dense canopy, ladder fuels uh, all the way from the surface up into the crowns. Um, you know, this plantation would support uh, extreme fire behavior under the right conditions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, under any of our conditions. Under any any conditions. Days, right? <laughs> so is the lower end of this unit, which I know is much deeper, and there's a water course down there, is the whole unit being treated or just the upper portion? It shows the water course on here. Well, so so there's different unit. requirements for the, the water courses than the actual unit itself. This has a 30-foot spacing requirement, and then there's the they they're basically I don't know they label them as like B or A units that are surrounding the the water courses, and so then that goes to 15-foot spacing, and then there's a no treatment zone uh, that's kind of a buffer on either side of the. Of the creek itself, so but it's all going to be tractor load. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is all ground-based harvesting. Yeah. So there, the it's prescription. Manual. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just, we're using feller bunchers to cut cut the trees, and then uh, you know we walked all the, we walk all the skid trails, mm -hmm. and so they do a lot of packing of the, the trees and and creating of bundles on or adjacent to the skid trails. And then if we have to cross a stream course, we have a designated crossing. And then, of course, when we're done, we make sure that it gets cleaned out of debris and, and, uh, and erosion control put in. So um, we try not to have, uh, we don't have landings in those, in, uh, in those B or A or C units. Um, usually there's a better spot to have just in the regular unit with the wider spacing anyway. So, and in fact, we've been reusing from when they originally logged, you could still see a lot of the temp roads and original landing prisms. So we've been reusing the original landings and temps throughout this whole sale. So um, it's been fairly straightforward. We've, like I said, we've moved through quite a few acres on it and uh, had you know, so Dan, a lot done. Do you have a, a recent inventory? How many trees per acre? are you dealing with in most of these plantations? I can I can get that out of the EA. Maybe at the next stop, I'll, I'll give you that, that number that... Um, yeah, just looking, it's probably, my guess is five to 600 trees yeah. per acre. And it probably, after thinning, you're probably looking at 120 trees the acre, maybe? Yeah, and, and the prescription does vary depending on whether it's uh, in uh, LSR, riparian reserve, or, or not, and, and so wider spacing outside of the riparian reserve, and, and as Max was saying, a closer spacing in the riparian area. So they're taking well over half the stems out. Sounds like. and yeah, and, and you'll see that in the, yeah. in the units mm -hmm. that we're going to look at. I'm a little jealous, actually, because we don't really have some of that going on right now. I've got places we can do this with this era of, of um, plantations, but um, it looks good when you get up here. Thank you. See it? So no marking, I gather from looking at the map, it's all designation by description or prescription or spacing. But, yeah. but I mean, you didn't, you didn't spray any paint. It's all there is orange paint. Right there. Oh, you did leaf tree. There are some leaf tree Marty. tree uh, uh -huh. patches. They they've been um, having some. There's some small clear cuts, not clear cuts, but pat through patch. Yeah, yeah group selects. You did I variable guess density. Skips and gaps. Yeah, variable. Mm -hmm. This is another way to say it. Mm -hmm. It just okay. looked, I, I thought it was, you know, we'll see it as we move up, and I looked at the stuff on that side, too, and it just uh, it looks more like a forest now than it did a corn rose or corn plantation. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it looks really, uh, I think it looks pretty good. good. Yeah, a little closer to probably what the historic forest stand structure yeah. Yeah. And that was done to just provide more diversity in the stand sure. rather than yeah. just the same, you know, plantation, uniform, you know, age and spacing. 
just to uh, throw some of those gaps in there and try to enhance some of the other species like there's madrone. Mm -hmm. Some of those have been painted in orange and chinkapin with yeah. orange leaf tree paint and then some nice clumps of you know some of the larger dug firs yes. yeah. or white firs. So looking at this can you Max or show us what is going to be your better wood products out of this? Yeah. Um, well, for the prescription, we have to, we're trying to leave the biggest tree um, and then space, basically get an average of 30 feet from that tree throughout the stand. So anything that's smaller than that biggest tree for that certain section is what we're going to take. And then uh, we're not, not required to take anything um, that's under 10 inches on the stump. Uh, and we can't space off of it either, so it has to be the, the bigger trees. So a lot of like a lot of the pine, you would you wouldn't be cutting uh, unless you needed to get to it, one of the trees that you are going to cut because it's too small. So you're going to pretty much be going after the dug fir here. Doesn't wouldn't the Forest Service like to have less stems? Yeah, I mean, from a, I can speak to it from a fuel standpoint. Yeah, we would, we would want to have more more canopy spacing and and you know pruning to raise the, the height to height to live crown. So are the trees that are live pruned up? If your trees the purchaser doesn't want, you still like them out or, or at least down. Down would be better than up, right? Depends. I think when we go out to the next yeah, you know, see, it, 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 I don't think it's, at least what I saw when I was out, I was out here hunting fine. Anyways, I didn't see any, yeah, I didn't see any issues with it. I think the spacing was fine. There's, you know, you have, I think you have an occasional small tree scattered here and there. So th this unit being so atypical of all the rest of them and having so much sickly pine in here, do you really want to be leaving the pine behind? I don't. <laughs> well, th there's two theories behind it. One is you have species diversity, and even on South Fork Mountain, having species diversity is fine. And if you are leaving the biggest tree, so if you look at that clump over there and you say, okay, the great big dug fir, that's our leaf tree, and we're going to space off everything else. We're going to cut everything else within 30 feet of that tree that is at least 10 inches on the butt. Well, that's going to take out almost all those other little trees until you get to your next big tree 30 feet away. Because even though those pine are scraggly and little, they're 10 inches on the butt. You know, all these right here, they're all 10 inches on the butt. Those would all have to go. They look sick. Well, yeah, but they're not, not doing diamond. well. Since not and, yeah, they just get their full needle count. Since they they were planted, and then the dug fir came in after them. To me, the dug fir look a lot healthier than yeah. those pines. Oh yeah, there's no doubt. This is a dug fir site. No, um, no doubt about it. And and the NEPA does allow for follow-up fuel treatments. So thinning, hand thinning, hand piling, pile burning, jackpot burning, mastication, chipping. All, all those tools are covered in the in the NEPA um, for, for follow-up use. And what's the funding for that? Uh, the funding for that um, would be... Uh, receipts? Well, um, I suppose... Um, no. Or no, 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 it would be appropriate dollars. Yeah. Be doing that. So, so it would be... Uh, yeah, it would be our, our fuels mode. Can you share that rule? Because we always, I always have to remember that too. Yeah. So retained receipts can't be spent on Forest Service salary. And so the whole idea of a stewardship contract is that retained receipt, receipts have to be spent um, spent by somebody else doing the work. So and it would be a service contract or and you know, some of And not within, necessarily within the sale area boundary, correct? Yeah, it can be used. Um, you know, stewardship dollars could be used on our anywhere on the, the Shasta Trinity. I'm not sure about the region. I think you know we'd have some say over that first. So but, these uh, guys could ask a question, not that they ever would, but say the pilot project comes online, can these receipts from this sale be used implementing the pilot project? Absolutely. Yes. I'm just throwing it out because we all we're getting more receipts on some of these sales that are good ones like this and appreciate you guys from SPI buying this one 
and we have it in other cases too, but it gives us more flexibility and more restoration work beyond the sale boundary where old, our traditional means of retaining receipts for reforestation with the Newton Vandenberg Act or salvage sales were more specific, much more specific and controlled to the sale areas. Correct, Ola? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> also, they can't be used for um, doing uh, the NEPA right. activities. Right. It right. has to be done, for, spent on implementation. So yeah. it mm -hmm. really is meant to, to come up with retained receipts to be spent by somebody else besides the Forest Service to continue to do more you know, restoration type activities. Including road work. They can road work is... Erosion is, control. Yeah. Different things. Well, that's, I mean, one of the things that we focus on is the fuels and road work. So, you know, a lot, a lot of times in the past, like KV money and stuff like that would be used on pet projects or these kind of things. And right now we're focusing just roads and fuels. So like with our project we're working with the collaborative on now with the first 48, that money is going to go back into um, some of the road work and, and fuels. Plus we have the settlement money too, but which is different. Um, but basically, uh, I think that we were talking about, you know, how you designate your stewardship area and how you, you know, we're trying to look at that right now with, with the funding sources that we get from our budgets, it's really hard to actually get fuels work done. My district got $2,500 out of the budget last year for fuels. That's it. That's it. But we spent a million. Oh, okay. So we spent a million, and in fact, we spent a million is because it was non-traditional funding sources, Joint Chiefs, and other places where the money came in. And so that's really where we have to focus a lot on. If if the first 48 uh, sells and has uh, a good price on it, we'll start retaining receipts. We might do an IRTC. We haven't decided that stuff yet, and then uh, that'll give us. Um, some more additional flexibilities uh, where we spend the money but like when we talk about implementation that's one of the big things with doing these collaborative projects along the roadside is you never know what's coming on the road you know you have good commercial and then you have on well, my district you have nothing sometimes so we'll see some of that coming up <laughs> Any more questions about? Yeah, a quick question on retained receipts. So I thought it was the gross revenue from the sale. It's the net revenue after planning costs and the, the implementation base, costs. The base rate. What's the base rate? Go ahead and you are your poor service folks. <laughs> The base rate's set by the region, right? Yeah. yeah. Is it, what, it, it's, what is it? It's, it's the money that goes back into the federal yeah. government. Yeah, we can't get away from that. We have to have the minimum, that base rate go back. Right. What which, is the base rate? It could rate? be How's 50 cents a CCF. It depends on, it depends. you know, you have to do an appraisal, yeah. and your appraisal is depending on the last five appraisals that were done in, the, in a similar area or that area. So or it's not the cost stuff. of putting on the sale, the planning time. No. Okay. It goes, well, and then it goes through. Value too, isn't it? What's that? Isn't there an aspect of the calculation involving the value, the market value of lumber too? And it is. It actually is a yeah. formula. It goes, it, it goes yeah. into a formula, and it spits out a number that we, we have to adhere to. <laughs> We don't have any flexibility on changing that much unless we tweak our, our numbers on our side, but it, it kicks it out. We have to pay that part back. It goes into the Federal Reserve, and then everything else is, uh, you know, between us and the region and getting the so money the, back to the forest. With the, uh, you know, like salvage sales, which are a lot of times hard to sell because of merchantability issues, the regional forester said he is willing, in order to get the treatment done, even under his authority, lower the base rates. Just otherwise, we can't get the work done because industry can't come to the table because it's too expensive for what you get because of merchantability issues. So you try to sell it for even less. And base rates, Bob, vary by species. Generally, the lower value species have a lower base rate. So, like white fir base rate used to be a dollar a thousand, whereas sugar pine was a hundred thirty dollar a thousand base rate. Okay. No, so it, Red it, first free. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's go look at some logging. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so about another mile and a half or so down the road. Yep. Um, there's a big landing, so uh, plenty of parking. Can you go check trees? About the trees per acre. Uh, you know, 
by size class, so the, the plantations that are, you know, the trees are 10 to 20 years old, um, 400 to 500. And in the, the older plantations, the ones that are, uh, you know, 20 plus years old, uh, averaging 400 to 600 or more trees. Mm -hmm. So you were, you were pretty spot on there, Tom. Mm -hmm. So and then the, the ones that have been cut before um, were thinned to an uh, average of uh, maybe 300 trees per acre. But they were thin more than 10 years ago. They were PCT. Yeah, the ones the ones that had been thinned. Mm -hmm. So it's like a little leaf patch here. here. Yeah. So it's I'll let patch. I'll let Kate and um, let these guys speak to. The, the state of the unit. So it's, uh, yeah, there's no leaf patch necessarily. If, if any tree was to be left on purpose, it would have orange paint on it. So that might have been an area where there is some rocks in here and maybe okay. the machine could be fun with that good spot. But, um, you know, in general, uh, we're trying to leave the biggest trees in the thinning and then it's operator select. You know, uh, we go 30 feet between, you know, the boles of the trees. Uh, and occasionally you come to an area if it's too steep or you couldn't get to it uh, where it's a little tighter than that. But in general, um, once you get out there walking around, and the sale administrator out here was, he had a tape with him and he was measuring. And, you know, because we're, we're out here every day um, just monitoring the cutting. and. Um, the role of sale administrators to make sure that uh, you know we're uh, they're staying on skid trails. The spacing is in compliance with the contract, and so um, there's a lot of oversight by the Forest Service on a project like this. Um, and then, as you can see, there's trees that are smaller, like that that little well, it's a dead tree right there. But the the smaller trees, um, we try to avoid. Um, having to cut them because um, you know that it's not uh, we're not taking biomass on this sale. Where you know on some of our projects over on the east side, we'll cut the biomass and chip it, but um, we don't have that. You can't get chip vans up up these roads, so um, pretty much just a, a saw timber product that we're getting out of here. But once they get to the landing, then they can take those tops that we cut down to a six-inch top stroke them out to get that small wood that went to that other facility. So um, if, if there's a unit that has a riparian area, you know, the, the, um, the spacing gets narrowed up quite a bit. And um, so we're, uh, we're monitoring the, if we have to cross a stream course, uh, we're making sure that um, they, they get uh, rehabbed when we're completed with all the skidding operations. So, um, so is this unit completed? This unit is completed. So no more fuels work? Uh, it's completed as far as the contract goes. Right. I don't know if there's going to be more fuels work done. That would be, Daniel would have to right. assess so, that. Well, so you're burning the pile. Yeah, We're so going to burn the pile. Definitely burn yeah. the landing pile, um, and it'd be a unit by unit, but we, we could look at doing jackpot burning in here too, where there are concentrations left, uh, particularly underneath. Uh, underneath other trees, we could we could go in and do a follow-up um, uh, jackpot burn. Um, what about pruning? Lower, and pruning. What, yep. What you can reach. Yep. Yep. Uh, so pruning is also uh, you know covered in the in the NEPA as a as a follow-up fuels treatment that we can do. But it's not and required. E either. either one of those at this stage doesn't buy you anything fuels treatment-wise. Right. What you have now, you have dead limbs. Uh, that are going to break off the stuff on the ground. You'll be amazed after this mm -hmm. winter. The snow is going to crush. Yeah. Ninety percent of that stuff down to hardly anything. Fuels wise, this is this is in a condition right now for the next twenty years, thirty years, where if a fire is going to go through here, it's going to stay on the ground pretty mm -hmm. much. And that's the kind of fire we can fight way easier than if this was a plantation. I look at this and, you know, I'm not, I don't have any worries. If I had a lightning strike somewhere in this, this kind of a stand and we responded, say, on this side, it, this is, this is a, an ideal condition for our folks to fight in. It's 
safe for them or safer for them. And uh, that fuel, it's kind of like when you masticate, people see all that debris on the ground. You're like, oh my gosh, that's a lot. But it actually, it does not burn fast at all. And sometimes it's even hard to ignite. So um, this would be not that, that difficult no. as far as the fire goes. And like you're, you're going to also see, in the, especially in these fur dominated stands, that there's not a lot of surface litter, like, you know, needle litter that's going to support um, that, that surface fire spread. And, and so all of those tools I mentioned are, are, are uh, available to us, but again, it'll be a, a unit by unit, case by case basis of whether or not that was necessary, as, as Tom was pointing out. Um, and, and when I was talking about pruning, you know, we'd, we'd be looking at pruning you know, live limbs or, you know, ladder fuels that are going to support uh, fire carrying into the crown from the surface and and these dead ones are not going to they're not going to support that at this time. from a soil standpoint this is a pretty cleaned up unit i mean this is you know nice uh, we wouldn't want to be taking a whole lot more off the ground uh, so it seems like the, the multiple objectives enough left for protecting soil enough taken and hopefully meeting the civil cultural prescriptions for growing new trees yeah, this is really, this is, we're doing this on almost all our ground now is, is basically whole tree logging it for that feller buncher snips them, puts them into a group, a bundle, uh, a, uh, either a cat or a rubber tired skitter with grapples comes along, grabs them by the butt, brings the whole bundle to the landing at once. Limbs get broke off as it's getting skidded, but the bulk of the material all ends up at the landing. And by taking that three to six inch material, that, I mean, I have piles yeah. 10 times bigger than that. So do we right now. When, when you, when you <laughs> leave that, get some material on. So just getting that, that six six to three inch stuff off makes a huge difference in how big the landing is. It's too bad the truckload isn't coming down, Bob, because it was, it was uh, they were very nice uh, little logs. It almost looked like a load of fence, uh, long fence posts. Yeah. yeah. No photos? You don't have any idea? No, we were driving. No, okay. <laughs> I was driving. Kristen would have had to have taken it. She just wasn't fast <laughs> enough. <laughs> so, Tom, what do you think about brush invasion here? Like white thorns going to take hold? No. Nope. No, because... Um, one, you, you aren't doing any burning right now, and usually when the white thorn comes in, is seeing all this is, is really uh, active after a burn. So with very little burning being connected, the seed that's in the soil here isn't going to sprout back up. And this thing in five years, maybe six years, you'll probably have 80% canopy closure again here. Wow. Yeah, it's going to grow. These are great trees. You want to take a guess on percentage today? Canopy closure? Yep. 60. Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a forestry. He always overestimates them. <laughs> Because when we've cut down to 40, because, you know, with uh, some of the old prescriptions for foraging habitat on spotted owls, we cut it down to 40. And uh, when you cut it down to 40 and you get out there and you can use whatever you want from a sight tube to a, a densiometer, but you'd be surprised how thin 40% canopy is when you get there and, and look at it. It's very open. Yeah, but it's for a short period of time. It is. You it know, is. when you do these thinnings, your, your canopy opening is... In the, in, in the scheme of things, it's a blip in time. Well, and that's something that we got, you know, that I've, I noticed when I first came to the Forest Service, and it's something that we got to think about is, you don't want to look at this stand right now and go, okay, is this what I wanted as an outcome in the future? Because I looked at a cell, we did a plantation cell. We probably had twice as many trees on the ground. And in five years, it's back to the condition that we had when we wanted to thin it in the first place. And so you do have to look at the fact that you got to thin it down so that that prescription lasts for 10, 20, upwards of 30 years. Because we're not, you know how it is, we're not coming back here anytime yeah. soon. So when you harvest these trees, whenever that is, you'll see in the rings reflected this, this release. Oh, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it'll take yeah. a couple of years. But. It, the, the drawback by waiting as long as they did to thin this, oh. your crown to bowl ratio is more like 30%. Right. Right. Ideally, you'd like to get them at 50%. When you, when you have more needles, <coughs> then your response is going to be almost immediate. That makes sense. Here, it's going to take three or four years just to get enough needle mass to 
really get your diameter growth going. And your 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 fastest diameter growth occurs where your crown level is. So you aren't if you did a diameter boring, it's not gonna seem that fast at DBH, but it, at your crown is where your fastest diameter growth mm. is occurring. So that's why you want ideally you want to do your thinnings where you have at least fifty percent live crown. And just out of curiosity is these trees, I've heard a lot about your interest in telephone poles material. Is that tree there in front of us an example? Uh, yeah, the best power poles are the ones that are all left here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you, would, you would have doubled the value of your sale if you would have said, leave everything else and only cut those. And that is an example of yeah. what you like. Yeah, they, 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 that particular tree you could actually, well, there's got a crook in it right there. So what they do is they take a 32 foot saw log off of that. And then they take a probably a six, 55 footer, 45 or 55 footer pole out of it above it. Okay. But the other one right next to that, yeah, that's got a little sweep. They all have a little crook in them, yeah. They all got a little picky, picky, picky. No, but no, the, that's the, the pole are companies really are the ones, man. Yeah. So, they're yeah. bad. Like that one over there, it's kind of got a little bit of sweep in the butt. Yeah. That one you'd probably take a 16 off the butt or a 14 off the butt. Uh -huh. And then you could get a long pole out of that, maybe a 60 footer out of it. Oh, that's it. Okay. Do you want to go down the road and see 120 <laughs> on the uphill side? Dog lover, it's not too far. Yeah. <laughs> there is the other red carpet. For the <laughs> <phone line>. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, this is utilization is also. So I just heard some folks talking about oh, firewood and stuff. Cold. Utilization is another, uh, you know, follow-up. Well, and that, that is they come really close together, and so they're really tall and skinny. For all of us, I mean, firewood? Yeah. Public firewood. You're going to see... That's, that's one type of utilization, not commercial. Yeah. Right. Um, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you're going to see a, a deck when you get back onto our side. Uh, there was 250 cord in the deck. It had been down from, I think, almost 500, but we've been hauling it out in just central location for people to cut firewood. And it disappeared. And it did, and we did use Joint Chiefs money to get out of the woods. It was cheaper than trying to pile and stack and burn that stuff. Yeah, so plus it could be used. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. we get it off our floors, get the out of Well, so what are we looking at here? Like Just another idea. unit, but um, actually really cool. we are next to one of those areas where you see those trees right kind of in the middle that have the double banded orange stripes on them. I do. Yep. Okay, maybe if you walk up the slope you can see them better. Yeah, so yeah. just beyond those little, little curves. Oh yeah. yeah. So that's one of the group selects where we thinned 50 feet outside of that group. So it's just it's just a little bit bigger gap in that to increase or improve diversity or increase the diversity with that particular clump of, of leaf trees. How did you decide you that would be a group? Where your skid was, um, so that's kind of a double. The, the marking group random. decided it. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> You know, they, they were just still instructed to pick out a nice group. Mm -hmm. Nice group. So it had to be a cluster of good trees. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe it was a madrone. Yeah. Or a sugar pine. Or a white fir. It could have been another species that we found in. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I didn't hear the answer to Aaron's question. What was the... I didn't hear Aaron's question. Oh, she asked uh, how they decided what... Uh, what would make a good group and um, I wasn't involved in the marking so but um, I'm you know they were I'm sure the the prescription talked about you know when you're out um, designating these groups you know find nice candidates you know as good examples of leaf trees that we want to enhance and it could be another species like a madrone or a white fir or sugar pine as well some of those have um, the or double banded orange paint on them. 
So it's just, uh, <clears throat> we're just giving those trees a little extra space. And then also the area around them is gonna be, um, you know, some kind of forb or brush component will come in to provide just more diversity in the stand. Rather than just having that even aged, um, you know, planted plantation, you know, same size, roughly. In the future, hopefully you'll have them at least 150 feet away from the road because we don't want brush next to the roads. Good point. Good point. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that is a good point. <laughs> so I'm going to ask the fuel break group. So if this were uh, over here, an area where you guys were doing the prescription for the pilot project, what would it? What would you be looking for it to look like? Since it's very similar, the first thing you call for is look for the biggest, best canopy tree and then space off it. So that big 60-incher back there is your best okay. tree, so that's your first tree you're going to pick with. And then we say pick off and have the diameter plus plus four, so 60, you go 64 feet, which would be probably one of these trees over here uh -huh. as your next lead tree and basically trying to where your crowns are just about touching and so it's going to look a lot like this except in smaller diameters smaller diameter trees we don't have a standard 30 foot spacing it's going to be diameter plus four so if you have 16 inch diameter trees you'd only have 20 foot spacing so smaller trees the trees are going to be closer together mm -hmm. Bigger trees are going to be further apart. Okay. So that's really the, the main difference in our, and then we only go 150 feet. Right. Up to, I guess we can go 300 feet on one side. 275. 275. Well, 25, we always do 25. Yeah, a minimum of 25 on one side. Right. And then uh, residual understory, the stuff that's been left along here, I uh -huh. think we would clean all that oh, out. Yeah. Okay. Except for where we boarded the Shasta train and took all three hundred. <laughs> what do you think, Dan? He's, there he's, might be a spot on South Fork Mountain where uh, I used all 300 feet of the. Oh, that happens. Wow, well, it's out. Well, you can't because 275 is the max. Didn't say that in the original document I got. <laughs> you were there standing next to me the day we decided on 25 foot minimum. Cool. I've got one spot that's a little wide on 48, but. What are you going to do? Leave the trees on top of the ridge? What's the fellow to do? <laughs> no, it's all good. But so it is going to look very similar to that. I mean, it's, except, that's except all this little stuff. Little, little yeah, bar. except the little, the little component be gone. But crown-wise, okay. I think you guys know that. if you look at the crown, that's that's, that's what I'd be looking for. You know, I look at those crowns and I think, okay, they have room for some growth. Uh, in some places, I would have probably, you know, spread them out a little bit further, but for the most part, at those, the trees, we expect them in the fuel breaks that we aren't going to have a crown treatment for 20 or 30 yeah. years, so they got to have some room to grow. Right. balanced against opening it too much and having the brush grow back. Yep. So. And we're not cutting hardwoods under our, uh, I don't, did you guys have hardwood component cutting in, in your prescription? Not in that, no. Just kind of thing. Or two. So it's hot and sunny right up the road, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> My wife texted me and said it was sunny in Fortuna. I don't know well, how that works. That means the storm is bad on the trees. <laughs> the big picture. Welcome yeah. to South Fork. They, they hang up here, man. Yeah, that's why it grows trees, trees like this. Yeah, yeah. 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 Leave the coast. Well, I imagine, but yeah, oh, to the keep, car. Keep so, what's the, the next stop? Be? So, um, that's that's all we have for the Shasta Trinity okay, portion. Then we're, so, we're heading to Ruth. What Dan's got. Okay, so for those of you that weren't on the last trip, pay attention to when we turn. 2S48, is that where we're going? No, we're not doing no, that. We're going to go to where, where we've actually implemented some uh, okay. work on the ground. We're going to go to the Ruth Guard Station. So we'll go okay. down South Fork Mountain to the Ruth Turnoff, and we'll head south. Um, and we'll go to the Ruth Guard Station where my fuels um, 
uh, planner is waiting for us, Nancy Curran, and oh, cool. uh, the remnants of the log deck that we had there, too. Where is it from like, the store? Mm -hmm. uh, it is just a uh, couple miles south of the store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She drives slower than Jeff Jones does, so you, you shouldn't want to take your car back. <laughs> and uh, Dave and I are not going to be going on to the, the Six Rivers um, portion of the, the trip. So if you, yeah, if you do have any other questions for, for Dave or myself, um, I'm happy to answer them. And I'm happy to uh, bring any follow-up information uh, we'll later on. Bring back to the collaborative uh, question on yeah. balance of receipts and where... Yeah. Um, December first. Now. Yeah, December meeting. The oh, pavement store so December much energy 15th, in I it think it's the year when it gets really cold and snows a bunch. Seems like a long it doesn't time usually stick on the road it? right away. Okay. Once winter sets in, that's another busy. story. I, I had some busy times. Amazing. People have half mile, basically all that to all the way around here to 30 Road is proposed fuel break, pretty much, on our ownership. Either through the Beaver Slide or Kelsey Timber Sale Project. Can you well, in this what? in this case, the Kelsey. So, the idea being is that um, we want evacuation road systems, right? And Ruth, on more than one occasion, has had to be evacuated in the last five years, and this would be a way to get out to get to the 30 Road and get to Highway 36. So, with that in mind, yes, this is a fuel break. You can see kind of the before of the fuel break with the man meter down there. That's, that was about the average height in here for a lot of it, some of it less. Um, the watershed masticator came through here. Uh, we tend to leave old growth manzanita in little groups so that we try to create somewhat of a mosaic in here. Um, Again, you're 150 feet. We had this dream of one time of trying to chip 50 feet either side of the road, but that's just not efficient. Hey, Nancy, really the safe tree mark below the road back here, what is that? That's part of a timber harvest unit Which in the Kelsey, oh, Kelsey timber sale. Mm -hmm. So right now, we are in the Kelsey timber sale and fuel break project area. Okay. And so in the road. Um, lots of, lots we drove, so we just finished getting out of the equipment exclusion mm -hmm. zone area where we can't masticate. Now we, we were allowed to keep a, an excavator masticator on the road and get the cuts and fills. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but the, the masticator that the watershed center has, the front end, the drum. is small, the drum is perfect for this kind of you know, he gets right down in there and noses in. So when you leave oh. clumps like that, do you you just tell the operator to leave some clumps? Do you, do you point yep. out how many? Do you mark them? No, he's a local boy, so... Um, just leave to, a few nice clumps yeah, every 100 leave, feet or 200 feet? Or, yep. And uh, try to leave... We're trying to leave old growth. There's concern from our environmental groups about the old growth, so we share that, too. I mean, that's what's nice about all of our guys working with us in our groups. You know, they go, wow, did you see that really cool old growth manzanita? You know, everybody appreciates that. So um, I don't have to worry about, like in a contract, I would have to probably flag those. You'd have to flag yeah. or mark and, every single and one And mark and go through a great deal of oversight and prep work. Where with, like you mentioned, watershed, it's not like they're in our back pocket, but or RCD for that matter, because they did the same thing for the beaver site stewardship. I disagree with you. You could do Again, the exact okay. same thing with a contract yeah. and not have it marked or anything. Maybe. If you if you have a description and say, yeah. contractor, here's what we expect and here's how many clumps we want. And I mean, you can make a good sale, but you could do the sole exact same thing with a contract. I agree with you, Tom. You're probably right, but it's just easier for me to just go, hey, start leaving us some old growth. I know, but yeah, I mean, that's that's not, let's not kid okay. ourselves that, that because yeah. it's nice that it's the only way. I'm not if, you, if you had a contractor bid this against what you guys did it and it was 50% cheaper, I'd say, hell yeah, do a contract. But I, you don't know. You didn't have okay, a bid. Okay, you're right. I haven't done a contract with this. I'll tell you one of the reasons right now, just really quick, because so, we got to keep moving here. Is. All right, we're moving along. 
so then I have to say, okay, on slopes this way, or hey, Daniel, forget it. I don't like the way the mastication's going here. We want to do this, we want to do that. We're in a learning phase. I agree with you maybe five years down the road after we've done this enough and we know exactly what we want, then I agree with you. But until that time, I like how we're evolving and moving along with it. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, when so. we looked at when we looked at <coughs> mastication contracts, and we had people look at some of the stuff that's on the plantation thin for uh, LT plantation, it was coming in so high. I, I can't pay seventeen hundred and fifty dollars an acre for them to masticate um, in the plantations, and so I don't think we're spending seventeen hundred and fifty dollars an acre. You know, and that's I what it was for uh, Unit One Hundred Two, which is at the South Fork Road, and uh, it was going to be paid for by the Deer Association until that time. And I don't know why it was that much money. We're that looking. Just seems insane. We're looking max around here, twelve hundred. I just calculated yesterday on a maintenance mastication on Mad Ridge, one hundred seventy nine dollars an acre. Maintenance mastication. Yep. And that's, that's watershed. And um, he he's done it so much, and he knows it. I don't even have to reflag the hundred and fifty feet because he's done it. It's the third time. If I tried to burn that, I bet you I'm looking at four hundred to eight hundred an acre. And then I get the sprouting back. Now, over there on Mad Ridge, we don't have the sprouting anymore. We're actually getting the California fescue back in. So, yeah, I, I understand contracting, but on stuff like this where we're evolving and we're learning, I like having our local folks doing it. Plus, it's our local folks doing it. So, um, that's where I'm coming from from that. So, in addition to this, what they can't, like around our oaks where it's sensitive or we got some furs here and there where the masticator can't get it then a lot of the scat crew comes they come right through bingo so then we get the whole area treated lop and scat and then as we move up the hillside you saw some in the campground that's where the removal comes in the only problem with the equipment exclusion area removal is is more difficult because we're hand moving it we're here when you're, we can just use, we're just using our excavator and he moves along. We'll see up where we have a lot more timber component. He just moves in and we deck it and load it and we're gone. But as far as the fuel break goes, fighting fire on the side of this road here is not gonna be a big deal compared to the way it was when it was scraping bins and needed down the sides of your rig driving up through here. Well, and back to that 150 feet real quick. So we just had the fire on Mad Ridge fuel break, 150 feet. So there's people go, hey, Nancy, that fuel break, it didn't hold. Oh yeah, it did exactly what it was supposed to. It sure, it did not exactly, it didn't hold where we had a steep swale or headwater, right? So what, fire's gonna come right out of there. But like what it allowed us to do, we were able to keep engines and hand crews to fire off of that. The fire came up, big deal. It spotted just a little bit. It would have been a lot worse had we not had the fuel break. So 90% of the fuel break held. We just put a little hand line where it spotted and it was done and over with. So controllability, the 150 feet for the most part works pretty darn good because the whole idea of, this, of these fuel breaks, it may not be to stop it. It's the idea that we can now manage the fire and get it stopped because if that fire had gone over Mad Ridge, it would have backed down in the roofs. So, yeah, not every place. There's places in fuel break, they're gonna breach fuel break no matter what you do. But in that case, we were able to just take a dozer, get a line around it, call it good. So, so it's like the North Pass fire on the Mendo, they had fuel breaks out there that didn't hold at all. You can't build a fuel break for the fire and weather conditions that they had when that fire went through. It's just not gonna happen. Someday it's gonna rip right through there. So we off to the next one. We were saving turtles where we thought, but they were dead, besides one. Oh yeah, I can't see. Oh, they were not squished, but dead? No, they were squished. Because there wasn't one squished when we came Their around. heads were squished. Somebody. The shells weren't squished, their heads were squished. <laughs> what happens is you hit them with the tire and their, sh their shells are sloped and the tire goes down and pinches their heads, so. Uh, yeah. fire, when we have fires out here, the turtles flee the creeks, um, believe it or not, and they, they actually hibernate twice a year. They hibernate in the middle of winter, and they hibernate in summer when it's really hot and the water starts to dry up. So, no, there was a grad student that did a, her work out here on this. 
Yeah, my pond also master's thesis. I learned a lot. They really? <laughs> Very healthy turtle population. Let's move on. You guys looked in the oak woodland what we were doing. Road, that huh? Is that 150 or? Yeah, plus or minus, whatever the GI. See what it used to be with all the little We did it off the back and whether the road layer's right or not is another story. But it's in the ballpark. So all those logs and stuff you saw up um, at the Ruth Guard Station were coming out of areas like this. Uh, we never have finished cleaning past here. So we still got more removal to do. We did some and you saw some log stack. So if a fire came in here, what do you think? No fuss, no muss. It's not gonna carry. I think I could just have, say to Joseph, Joseph, can you hold the line here, please? <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think it's pretty. No, Joseph, you don't get a dozer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> and, the wind, and the wind will be blowing 50 miles an hour, and then the embers flying everywhere, and then stay here. <laughs> All bets are off. But 95% of the fires, this is fine. Yeah. Right. There's yeah, I mean, you're just some. You're just winter, it's winter, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you can see, you see that carpet of understory. Oh, that certainly wasn't like that all in here, but it was probably a good third of like of that in here. Oh, that's um, and so, you know, it's it looks good. I would have wanted this myself. Uh, and Christian would talk about this. I would have liked to have seen this as a timber harvest unit because you got that one right there. What's Pretty wrong with taking some out of this one? And, then, you it would, and then it would have paid to do this work in here. Mm -hmm. But this side of the road wasn't in the project and that side was. <laughs> oh, the, the Kelsey project. I guess not, yeah. Yeah, it's too bad because this should have been in the other project at yeah. the very least. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of opportunity because see our oaks, you know, they're starting to do a battle here. Yeah, so I mean, from our, our uh, pilot project, we would, you know, we'd take those two trees out there and, and, you know, take one of these out and space them out a little bit more and you could have gathered enough volume here pretty easily to pay for it, so. Yeah, especially when it's combined with one across the road there, and they're going to deck in here anyway, so. On this side of the road? Probably when they yard up or something, they'll probably mm -hmm. use oh, this side. at least lay their logs in. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I thought um, it was outside the project boundary or something. You can lay your logs there. You can? Yeah, you can't put your burn piles there. Or equipment operating there. Mm -hmm. So when is this supposed to be done, you know? Yeah. Not soon enough. Uh, actually, this over here, they're trying to clean up. Um, I can't remember if this part's on the SPI cell or if it's... SPI, is, well, uh, Alan said he's got three weeks to finish up and recover his apps. He's going to be moving down slope, so I'm assuming... This is... Down here. They were trying to clean this yeah, up this year. next on his um, schedule. Okay. It is to move from the corrals over there to this road system. All of the Kelsey cells will be done before Beaverside's done, ironically. Even though it was... <laughs> The two, three yeah. years difference between yeah. the two of them, if not more. Yeah. I think it was three years, yeah. So um, I honestly want to kind of, you know, it, it sucks up a lot of uh, time managing these while we move forward on the new project. So, you know, I, mm. you can sense my angst. I want to get some of the new ones out the door and start seeing what they look like. You're right. Well, I was looking at this when we were standing here. You start looking at what would be marked to take out to spread these out so you don't have that bowl to bowl contact, you know, with uh, fire as it goes up between here. If it was going to go up and torch out a tree. Um, but these are old projects. This is a 2006. It's pre Dan. How's that? Yeah. Managed to save the sugar pine seedlings. Yeah. I, know. I actually, oh, and I saw you. Yeah. <laughs> you got a sugar pine right there. I think even earlier. I think the document mm -hmm. 2003 might Three, have been four, signed. Something yeah. Because like sure. it was Tracy Klein. Was, uh, little Doe Low, Low Gulch was the biologist prior, uh, prior to me on the district. I got here in uh, late 08. And I think Boke is still logging out there on Little Doe Little Gulch. 
So, and you know the, how that goes. We've had fires, so then, uh-oh, the mill has to take care of that first, and it keeps getting put on back burner. And um, so as we go up the road, you're going to see with the watershed, we were kind of staging, you know, we were going 50 feet. I can't remember all the reasons we had going at the time, but we still have a little more removal to do. Um, and a lot of that will probably either just deck it alongside the road or when we get our dump truck again, we'll load it up. But this is, this is kind of what we're looking at when you hear in result. So on the 48, we'd like something like this, only with less stem density. <laughs> if it's oak, it's fine, but I mean less. Because you'll be doing commercial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's kind of where, where we're headed, I'm hoping. Which one? One behind us. It's, it's nice they take well, the big ones. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd start with that big one and say, okay, that's my first tree. I'm going to start spacing off of that. And then like here, no, 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 not, 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 not the ground. Yeah. And so of these two, this one's a bigger diameter than the one behind you. Which one's the crown looks like it's fading it's out. Yeah, I was going to say, the one on the left take, take, take the better, leave, leave the better crown is, yeah. the, is the criteria. Yeah, diameter. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Most likely to have the most shade over the long time. Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And we'd want to leave the sugar. Dog in a log. Yeah. Right. There's a photo opportunity right behind you there. <laughs> that's, that's, way the, that's the way it works. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. staged. <laughs> so, you know, say we had a unit like this in the first 48. It's not going to be a timber harvest unit. It's a little less stems. And we're just calling it, it's not going to be a commercial component. Is that something we could throw in for a firewood? prescription or whatever we were talking about. Like if they had yeah. less trees and we were just going to yeah. cut an occasional one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're, we're saying do the entire road, yeah. but, but gen where you can generate enough revenue, generate revenue to try and pay for the entire road. My thought on those were going to be that they would be left up to how it put in there. It's an optional. You know, it's up, yeah. up yeah. to yeah. it. And if they want to come in and log it, fine. Otherwise, we'll dispose well, we of it ourselves. So we were potential. 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 With, with the, so we weren't calling it like it's a commercial pen. It's it's a shaded fuel break or hazardous fuels reduction. The potential was like TSI poles or pole size, you know. Um, so if a purchaser wanted them, them we'll, we'll get, we'll take, sell them to yeah. them. If they don't, we'll take care of it yeah. through our, our normal means. On first 48, you know, we're kind of <laughs> lucky in a sense. I know you might not have seen it, but the... Uh, when you're at Ruth, there's a roof fire scar. We got $300,000 out of the Ruth fire to do work, and uh, Kristen wrote up the uh, proposal for the region, and that's going to go into roads and fuels on the portion of the 48 that goes, well, the 48 road that goes up through the fire. So we've already got 300000 for that. <clears throat> and then on top of that, uh, we've got some additional funds that I've got kind of squirreled away that um, we'll be able to use on it. And then whatever comes in off of uh, whether we do an IRTC or a traditional sell, we'll still collect receipts off of that and put it back into the project. And so we're hoping to be able to do all that and then see out, see where we come out. Now, the, the uh, Mule Deer Foundation has been wanting a place to spend money on this district, and they've come to me asking about working on... Um, like uh, pre-commercial thins, so doing the TSI pre, uh, PCTs, so we might put them on 100 and how many acres in there? There are mule the deer here, are there? The uh, mule deer, uh, now the black-tail deer is considered a subspecies of the mule deer, oh, so yep. <laughs> well, we have a lot of flexibility and potential in there too, because we have oak woodlands, and so with that fire money, I wrote in little line items for, like we talked about the guzzler and doing some fuels treatment. Just trying to draw them on, draw them into it. Yeah. And then uh, Pat Fritz Morris, uh, California Deer Association, has been wanting to spend money again up here. I think, Nancy, you've had money in the past. We just, uh, with the watershed again, I'm, again, I'm not their spokesman, but um, <laughs> we just finished up in Cal Deer Money and them, and they're almost done spending it. I, I know even the growers are happy to see what um, Daniel did on the south fork of the mag. It's just 
it's night and day now. <clears throat> um, and then we're gonna do a fish lapis cap. But cow deer, yeah, 25 grand a shot. So, um, in Rocky Mountain, now that I'm hearing, the Elk Foundation, um, there's opportunity with them now that the elk seem to like coming over to we've the got, side of the mountain. We've got so. four small herds on the district now that we're trying not to broadcast where they're at just because we had uh, one of the bulls poached last year, um, but the person was caught. So um, some staff did good work with fishing game on that. But you know, it's hard to get the elk uh, mm -hmm. started, but you know, the first 48 has elk in it. Where is the 300 acres you're adding to the 700 on first 48? It was, no, it's, uh, that was the top of South Fork Mountain, uh, Route one, Route 23. And it was probably 200 and something. Yeah. It brought us up to like yeah. 800 acres. So it was originally, I can't remember now, it was like originally right around five and six, and then we went up a couple more, and then we added that and brought it up. So it's white fur, red fur with some go up on top. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's the same kind of stuff that was in the Redford project, other than there is some areas that got sugar pine and some cedar and things like that. But it's, uh, if you have a chance and you drive out Pickett's, past Pickett's Peak, there is blue flagging on the side of the road that's our side. So you'll see some on both sides where the ridges are at, and those are the units that are already laid out. And that was one area where we did take a little bit of liberty with that. 300 feet and the line because the forest line between us and Shasta Trinity is there and there were some gaps originally from the GIS and so we wanted to fill fill that together to make it a contiguous field break and so we added in a little bit more. And that's, there, we were so. supposed to have a field trip? I don't, I don't know. think anybody yeah. in the collaborative is going to have a tape measure to see if they're <laughs> 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 Well, that's where topography It's, it's not five on the one side. Yeah. It's not big, but when you got, yeah. you know, the rocky outcrop yeah. or the the, sure. the last patch on the Shasta or up to the Shasta border it's like okay so let's just let's just do that and uh, I've, I've marked all those down because it's oh yeah am I not petting you it's one of those things where you know you just you can't leave that la that last little tuft on top you need to work with your topography yeah. but in most cases you know uh, there's not I mean you go off on our side and it's just straight downhill and you know we, we've got the distances back and forth but that line does it goes if you look at it compared to the road because the road goes in and out that line shifts back and forth on the road but really on the topography it's fairly consistent well if we can ever get these pilot projects done mine one is, of the things I want to recommend is doing the ridge top first of all mine's not called pilot it's a proof of concept I didn't want to call it pilot because you guys had all these bad words about pilot so um, can't wait to get that proof of concept done. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, part of it's my fault because I am on an instant management team. Yeah. Yeah. I had seven weeks of fire duty yeah. and then I was out on sick leave yeah. for a couple of weeks oh. after that. We, we got... She got <laughs> I got behind, it. definitely. Yeah. You know, I hate making excuses, but between the snow last year yeah. and the yeah. fires this year, I'm not where I want to be. Yeah. So, but we're going to get it done. We're still going to get it done when we need to. And uh, I promise to get it sold as fast as I can so that we can start seeing what, what happens yeah. to it. And then, uh, you know, we'll come back out, look at it, and we'll give thumbs up, down, or neutral, and we'll make some modifications and go to the next project. I think that one of the things, too, is getting these things sold back to back is we still got louder than the equipment here. Um, so you based on what Nancy was talking about earlier, and that's the question for Tom, so if we were to go beyond 150 feet on this, would that require a road to get punched in then? 300, still get 300 it. feet is nothing to steal. Okay. Because that would be one of the big drawbacks that we would run into if, is if we had to punch out, roads. No new roads. Well, then that would kind of be just like a repair and reserve. Okay, if we need a road, then we're kind of... Right. So that been looking at ground, I mean, like on the chest tree, all that stuff is ground based. So you, you just drive your fellow venture where you need to go. So it's really easy. Once you get you over those 30 percent slopes, then yeah, it would be, it would be an issue. Your, your logging costs go up then because you have other types of equipment. But see, that's the kind of stuff we're going to learn on these. So we're going to have areas that are more expensive than others. Yeah. We're going to have areas that, that have, have no commercial value. to leave something like that. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. That's a wildlife uh, cover <laughs> habitat. <laughs> but yeah, but there is, that is, you that's like a wick. Right that's true. 
That, that would burn hot. Um, you know, if you look at, we had patches like that that burnt on Saturday that were, you know, we had these, uh, these pockets of conifer. And oddly, when, I don't know how it worked, you were out there too, that fire came screaming through the oaks and through that heavy grass, and it actually sat down when it hit the conifer and slowed down and started increasing in intensity and heat, and we were able to get it when it was there. It just didn't have that force to blow right through. Of course, the wind right. slowed the down. Wind. See what so the, the wind, see what happened. The wind dropped down it. Too. The wind dropped down. Yeah, that's and a pretty it, big thing. Right yeah. there. So, so yeah. you know, honestly, if, it, if anyone read about that in the paper, that fire in all accord would have gone to the top of South Fork had the wind continued. We would not have stopped it where we did. So, so do we have more stop? Next stop? Next. Mm -hmm. um, or do you want to turn around, go back out, or drive out to the 30? And I just, I mean, I'm thinking it's probably 220, 230. We've learned from this. Yep. Has everybody learned 22? what they came here to learn about the fuel break? I mean, this is the <laughs> heavy <laughs> eddy effect. Happening. I have one other area. It is not necessary. At the top of the ridge, it was going 50 miles an hour.